Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today we're going to have a casual discussion about parts and part storage. We don't have any really specific method for storing parts. We've just kind of grown up a system around us, but we'll share it and we hope that you've got a better way and you'll share that in the comments and we'll start doing that in the future instead. But here's kind of what we do. Here up close we've got all the stuff we need right away and since we work with surface mount parts that means mostly surface mount stuff. Now surface mount stuff comes in ribbons like this. So that makes it kind of hard to put in drawers. We just kind of curl them up and stick them in there. And we write on the front the value and the size. And we do try to design around these part values and sizes whenever possible. Uh, so we can always have them right here and it's faster and easier to get them. But not only that, uh, when we're doing a prototype, especially a one-off or a first-time prototype, we fudge a lot of values and instead of using the exact value called for, we'll reach for whatever the closest value in this box is. So I'll tell you about some of the substitutions we make as we go through. So up, up at the top we've got some sort of miscellaneous stuff, drill bits, uh, receipts, stuff that really should be filed better. But uh, down here we start to get into parts. Um, these are 0805 parts. We've got two rows of 0805. The first row is capacitors, starting with 27 PF. This is what you can use for just about any crystal if you're making a one-off prototype. And then next to it is 0.1 UF. This is a decoupling capacitor that goes absolutely everywhere. Uh, 1 UF we use for voltage regulators, uh, things like that that need slightly more capacitance than a 0.1 UF. Uh, and then next we have a ferrite bead. This is an 800 milliamp ferrite bead. And finally 0805 LEDs. And then we work mostly in 0603 now, which are the next two rows. Uh, we still use 0805 LEDs because the 0805 LEDs already seem to be quite small compared to regular 0805 components and the 0603 LEDs are even smaller so we prefer to stick with the 0805. The next row is still 0805 but this is where we keep our common resistor values. So the first one is a 100 ohm resistor, a 1K, 2K. Uh, 2K we use for just about any LED that's on 3.3 volts. Uh, we also use it for uh, transistor base resistors. Sometimes we'll use a 1K for that instead too. Uh, anything like a pull-up resistor on a pick, a reset pin, or an AVR reset pin, we'll go for a 2K or maybe a 10K depending. Uh, 10K resistors can go just about anywhere. If it's 5 volts we'll use these to, uh, as current limiting resistors on LEDs. The next two rows are 0603. This is the size we're using for most stuff now. The parts are a lot smaller than 0805 so they fit in places 0805 wouldn't. Not only that, they're a lot cheaper if you go onto Mouser or somewhere, you can get small quantities of 0603, sometimes at half the price of small quantities of 0805. The next two rows are some miscellaneous service mount parts. Here we've got a drawer of 3.3 volt regulators in different package sizes. This is the one we most commonly use, it's SOT23-5, that means it has 5 pins and it's, it's quite small. It's good for usually about 150 milliamps and usually these have an a enable switch so that you can turn it on or off from a microcontroller or something. We use these on the bus pirate to provide the switchable power supply. There's lots of part numbers for them. There's nothing really super consistent. This is a uh, SOT223, 3.3 volt regulator. It usually provides up to 800 milliamps. We use these when 150 milliamps isn't enough or we think heat might be a problem. That's all we keep stocked here. Uh, back in the archives we have some bigger regulators for surface mount and through hole but we don't need those a lot so we don't keep them up here. And next we have the same thing, surface mount 5 volt regulators. Surface mount diodes. We've centered on this on the BAS16J which is I believe a SOD323 package. It's quite small as well. These are very inexpensive and easy to find replacements for and substitutions. For uh, crystals and stuff, uh, there's just one big drawer of that. We use these HC49U. There you look like the through hole version except they have surface mount tabs instead. We keep 16 megahertz which is good for a lot of USB projects with picks. Um, 12 megahertz which is also used for USB. Uh, I've got 20 megahertz in here which we use for the USB IR toy. And then a small bag of 4 by 6 millimeter surface mount crystals in 12 and 8 megahertz which is what's used on the bus pirate version 4. Next up are MPN transistors. Here we use an SOT23 small service mount transistor. The part we standardized on is BC818. It's I believe 100 milliamps or slightly more. This drawer has miscellaneous service mount capacitors. Traditionally that means just a strip of 10 UF tantalum capacitors in a, a case A I believe size. There's a couple different names for that but we call it case A. Uh, 
Though tantalum capacitors use a conflict mineral, that means it's mined or extracted somewhere where there's wars and, and disputes related to the extraction of the mineral. So we've tried to move on to uh, tin UF uh, ceramic capacitors whenever possible. This drawer has surface mount USB mini B connectors. Uh, we used to buy strips like these, but then uh, Shock bought us uh, 50 or a bag of 50 or 100 for just a few dollars on eBay. And these are actually the nicest ones we've used. They're, they're easier to use than the ones from the, the reel. So we've been using these lately. A couple of them have slightly bent pins. You can see they're just kind of thrown in the bag. But uh, overall, a great deal for the price of 10 at Mauser. And then in the last mini drawer, we've got header. This is all sorts of header. Double header, single header, male, female, right angle, and straight. Uh, you can never have enough header. We use it for uh, usually programming stuff. And also, we'll use double header as a substitute for actual shrouded headers because we don't stock a whole lot of shrouded headers in the workshop. They can be odd sizes and you just never have the right value on hand. And in the bottom drawer, we keep uh, service mount uh, chips that we commonly use. So this is a bag of SOIC and SSOP chips, uh, mostly PIC chips. From the days when Microchip was a generous sampler. What we like to do is use the same part as much as possible in any design, especially in prototyping. If we can substitute a part, we will. So what we like to do is buy reels of the common parts like 2K resistors, 10K resistors, 0.1 UF capacitors, and then fill in with resistor kits and capacitor kits. This is a really nice one that CS Studio gave us at the Open Hardware Summit last year. This is a sample book with 50 or 100 of uh, most common capacitor values. They're nicely labeled, they have a printed labeling. These are nice when you can find them. I've seen them from anywhere from seven bucks to 70 bucks. You know, the, the price range is just outrageous. For parts that we really use in bulk, we buy full reels. And these are 2K resistors, 10K resistors in 0603, 0.1 UF capacitors in 0603, the kind of stuff that we can go through really fast. We keep full reels on the shelf. These are the binders where we keep parts that we don't use on a day-to-day -day basis. They're usually on the shelf behind me. There's a bunch of sheets in each one with parts shoved into them. We'll go through them really quick. This one is an 0603 capacitor and resistor kit. Inside the binder, the different values are divided into plastic sheets like this. This one has 0603 capacitors and resistors, uh, some miscellaneous capacitors, and then some different chips and microcontrollers and stuff. It's got one section divided into 0603 resistors. It's getting a little full. This is a section with one UF and bigger, so miscellaneous capacitors and case A and bigger packs, the AVRs, MSP430, uh, TMS470, that's the Texas Instruments ARM chip. This is a radio transceiver chip, and then CPLDs and field programmable gate arrays. This book is full of 0805 capacitors and resistors. Here we've got PF range 0805 chips, UF range, and then a small 0805 kit that we picked up on eBay. This isn't as nice as the 0603 kit, but uh, it was only four or five bucks. The resistor section is also divided up that way. Zero to 1K resistors, 1K to 10K resistors, 10K or more. This is a folder full of passives and small silicon. That's things like voltage regulators and crystals. And finally, my favorite, ICs and stuff. Last up is the through-hole box. This is where we keep all our old through-hole components and connectors and that kind of stuff, but also old 1206 service mount stuff that's bigger than we commonly use anymore. This was a best friend for many years. This is a complete through-hole resistor kit. It costs about $13 and has 10 of each of the most common values of through-hole resistors. These are the old 1206 service mount parts, through-hole capacitors, a bag of 10K through-hole potentiometers that we picked up in Shenzhen. This is a big bag of screw terminals. These came from eBay for a couple bucks. Even if you work with surface mount, you still need these if you need a screw terminal. Our part storage is far from perfect, but we're happy with the concept of keeping common parts up here close at hand when we're prototyping and keeping the rarer stuff in folders. The folders are a mess, but it's better than digging through a big pile. We're hoping you have suggestions and better methods. Leave a note in the comments or send us a picture through the contact form. We'll share it with everyone on the blog. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with a new workshop video.